It's 2021, and as a woman of God, I know that the Bible is a living word. It states in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and active. But I also know that the word was written over 1900 years ago. And I sometimes wonder, can the women in the Bible, something that was written over 1900 years ago, relate to me as a woman today? in 2021 can the stories of Ruth and Boaz relate to who I am Eve in the Garden of Eden how can she mirror the things that I face now today in the world of the vast technology and the information at my fingertips or what about Rahab the prostitute or the woman in the well How can I see myself in the women then? Does this still resonate with who I am now? Can those stories, parables, teachings be relevant still today? This week, we will do a video series called Who Am I? And in that video series, We will be depicting ourselves as a woman of a Bible and how we relate to their story now in 2021. Hey guys! This is your girl, Latrice. I want to say welcome, 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 guys, to this amazing mini-series, guys. I am so excited and honored to be here before you guys. This week, we're talking about women in the Bible, guys. This is an an amazing, amazing, amazing Mother's Day mini-series. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us, God. Fall fresh on us. Saturate us with the moisture of your presence. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. I pray for restoration. And I thank you in advance. I thank you, Jesus, for what you are about to do. And if you love Jesus, shout amen and amen. So tonight I'm speaking on Luke 13, 10 through 17. You know, the Bible has some mysterious women in it. And it does not mean that the women are not important. It just means a woman, a little It's known about her. Amen. Amen. So the gospel tells us in Luke that this woman was bent over for a very long time, guys. She was bent over for 18 years. So tell me what you think when you read that. What do you think How do you feel about this woman being bent over for 18 years? Okay, guys. So in my studies, I come to realize that this woman suffered from extreme curvage. Okay. And this is where her knees were literally parallel to her chest. And she was no way able to lift herself up. She was not able to lift her head. She was only able to see what was down. 
for 18 years, she could not see nothing but what was down. This woman suffered from acute scoliosis. Wow, guys. Acute scoliosis. She suffered and was not able to lift herself up, was not able to lift her head for 18 years. 6,570 days. 216 months. 9,460,800 minutes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? She was bent over for 157,248 hours. That's a long time to suffer, guys. That's a long time to not be able to lift our heads. That's a long time not to be able to see anything but what's on the ground. But what's in the past? It's a long time not to be able to see anything in front of you because I can't lift, I can't lift myself up. For 18 years, she was bent out of shape with no reprieve. Have we ever suffered and suffered with no reprieve? No reprieve. For 18 years, she had to depend on people. For 18 years, she had to walk, bent over. For 18 years, she couldn't see anything before her, only what is on the ground. Only what was on. Have you ever had to walk in dysfunction? Have you ever had to walk in abnormality? Have you ever had to walk in the past and couldn't see any other way, couldn't see any other way out? That's all you saw. Now I know a lot of us I know a lot of us, I'll say a lot of you, have our bodies in shape and we can sit up in peak state. Our spine is right. Our body is tight. Our physical body. That's what I'm talking about right now. Your physical body is tight and the light, yes tight and right. Our spine is right and tight. We can set up in peak state our physical bodies. I know a lot of us has never dealt with such a thing as being bent out of shape. Never dealt with anything like that. Never dealt with anything being bent out of shape. Life has never but then there's some of us where life has bent us out of shape. And we're looking at the ground and we can't lift ourselves up. We can't lift our head. I want to suggest that the worst of being bent out of shape is there is no physical evidence. <laughs> That's the bent out of shape I'm talking about. 
when the outside's looking good. The outside is looking good, right? But the inside has acute scoliosis. And I could no way lift my head. I could no way lift myself up. Now, if we physically been out of shape, we can't hide that. We can't hide being physically. I walk with a cane, I can't hide that. So physically, when you're not right, we can't hide that from others, okay? But when I have that inside bentness, that's the one. That's the one we can hide, that inside bentness, you know? We can hide that, we can fake it till we make it. But on the outside, if you physically bent, you can't fake it. But on the inside, I can fake it. You cannot know that I'm all messed up. You cannot know that I want to die. I don't want to live anymore. But when you look at me, I look like I'm good. I look like I'm all right. Everything is fine. All is well. So on the inside, I'm all been out of shape. I'm all been out of shape. On the inside, when I've been out of shape, I can just go on about my business and tell you guys I am blessed and highly favored. I am too blessed to be stressed. I am anointed. And I all that, I can tell you all that, all that, too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> I can tell you all that until I get by myself. Until I get by myself. And then, then all my bentness is present. It's present. Everyone is gone and it's just me and my acute scoliosis. My emotional acute scoliosis. And do you know if we continue to camouflage, put makeup on our bruises, pretend everything is all right, we'll never get delivered. We'll never get delivered. You know guys, growing up, the families always say, you never let them see you sweat. You don't tell nobody your business. Don't look like what you're going through. And all that time, all those years, you're getting further and further and further bent over. And then one day you realize that you cannot lift your head. You cannot, you can no way lift yourself up. We look good on the outside, but internally we are broken. We are hurting. We are screaming silently. And that silent scream, my God, that silent scream is piercing. That silent scream Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The silent scream for help once I get behind closed doors. Can you imagine the silent scream that the lady had? for 18 long years. She was in pain. She was in turmoil. She was humiliated, depressed. 18 long. All of our brokenness, 
with all our internal turmoil, we have to learn, guys. We have to learn to get down on our knees and say, it's me, O oh Lord. It's me, O oh Lord. It's me, O oh Lord. And I'm standing. I'm standing in the need of prayer. It's me. We've been bent out of shape in all kind of ways, guys. We've been bent out of shape in our finances. Financially bent out of shape and we're walking around in Gucci. And we should have been in Fuji. But we didn't want anyone to know. So we go out and we do things that we can't afford. We buy things. We are bent over, guys. We are bent over internally. But I'm here to testify, guys. I am here to testify that I have been through some things. I have been through some things. I have been through some things. And right now, I am here to tell you that life, life has bent me out of shape and I had nowhere to turn. Nowhere to turn. Guys, I have been bent out of shape and right now, I am so desperate, so desperate, and I don't care anymore. I don't care who knows. I don't care anymore. I don't care who knows. I don't care who knows. Because people don't have the answers to my life matter wise. Only God, only God does. When life comes, and it's coming, when life comes and bend you out of shape, you have to have long suffering. You have to have long suffering. That's a must. You have to have long suffering. No matter how long you're going through, guys, no matter how long it seems like it's taken, you have to have long suffering and you have to go to the right place. What? You have to go to the right place. You have to God. go to the right place in your mind. And that right place is, I am glad when they say it unto me. What? Let us go. Into the house of the Lord. You have to keep your mind right. You have to keep your mind right. Long suffering. And be glad when they say it unto you. Let us go. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving. To his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. The Amen. Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures. Everlasting. Forever. Forever. What is everlasting? Forever. It ain't nothing like being around like-minded people. It ain't nothing like being around like-minded people when you're going through something. When you're going through your lows and when you're going through your highs. You have to be around people that are thinking the same way you're thinking. When I say holly, you say hallelujah. When I say thank you, you say Jesus. Okay? We have to surround ourselves with the people that has the same mindset. So when we're going through our issues, we can't isolate ourselves. When we're going through these things, we cannot isolate ourselves. This is why the woman kept going to the synagogue. She kept going because she had to be around the people that had the same mindset. The same mindset. Is there anybody here that understands what I'm saying? Is there anybody here that understands that life has bent me, has bent you out of shape? But I'm still holding on. We're still holding on. We're still seeking. We're still seeking his face. We're still holding on for 18 long years. For 18 years, I would have thought that maybe, y'all, yeah, I thought that maybe she had gave up. 
18 years, I thought she, I, I can imagine she would have given up, been frustrated, questioning God, questioning her faith. But that's where that long suffering comes in. That long suffering, guys. How do you stick with God? And he hasn't answered your prayer in 18 years. How do, you, how do you stick with him and, and you haven't had a miracle that you've been praying about for 18 years? How do you, how do you still pray? After 18 years, how do you continue to seek God? And it seems like Nothing is changing. If you allow me to step out on the wings of probability, I can only imagine that she was saying that morning, that particular morning, I'm not even going today. <laughs> you know, guys, I've been, I've been going through this for 18 years. I'm tired. My back hurt. I've been bent over for a while now. I'm, I'm just tired and and it don't seem like things are working and I'm just going to just stay here and wallow in my mess. I'm just gonna stay here and say, woe is me. I'm gonna hit the alarm clock and, 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 and turn the alarm off. I'm, I'm not gonna go today. I'm not gonna seek his face today. I'm not gonna pray today. I'm not going to the synagogue today. No, I'm, I'm gonna stay home and and get some rest. It's it's long time overdue. I'm gonna stay home and 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 just rest, sit on the couch, not do much. But you know what? I've been praying for a while. I've been praying for a minute, and ain't nothing happened. I can imagine her waking up on that particular day, that particular Sunday, and say, "I'm not going today." As she laid in the bed, trying to talk herself out of it. Something gave her the intestinal fortitude to say, I, I'm going to go on to go. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go on and seek his face today. I'm going to go on and seek his face. Yeah, nothing ain't happened. It's been a minute, but I'm going to go on and go today. Now, verse 12 says, when Jesus, okay, okay. Now, I believe this is Trees. I believe that on this particular day at the synagogue, okay, Jesus was coming this way. And she was coming this way. And a path met. What if she wouldn't have went that day? She was coming. This, we can't give up. We can't give up. At the appointed time, not at my time, not at your time, at God's appointed time. Guys, this is why we can't allow our circumstances to keep us stuck. We can't allow our circumstances to take over our mind where we can't think straight, where we can't get where we have to go. Our blessings are based on us getting to the point that we're supposed to be at. Amen. There's a whole bunch of people at the synagogue. A whole bunch of people there. Okay? But if you let me imagine, if you let me imagine, it was a bunch of people there. And Jesus saw her. But there's a bunch of people there. And I'm sure they stood out more than her because she bent over. All right? It was her appointed time. Amen? Amen? So what if she would have stayed at home? So let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. When Jesus sees someone bent over. Life have bent them out of shape. When Jesus sees you bent over, 
when he see trees bent over, when life have taken me and bent me out of shape, but I have long suffering. What? Yeah. It's a whole lot of people in the synagogue. It's a whole lot of people here. It's a whole lot of people going through. But Jesus saw her and her long suffering. She had long suffering. She had faith to keep seeking his face. Amen. When we have long suffering. When we have faith. When we believe that God is going to do eventually at the appointed time. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. It moves his heart. It moves the heart of God. God is moved by people that have long suffering anyhow. Have faith anyhow. It don't matter. I believe anyhow. It don't matter what they say. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what it feels like. It don't matter. I got faith anyhow. That, that's powerful. That's powerful. That moves the heart of God. That anyhowness. We can say all day long, he ain't worked it out today. But today may be the day. He didn't work it out yesterday. But today may be the day. He didn't work it out this morning. But we still got time today. Today may be it. Today may be it. We can't give up. Today may be the day. Today may be our appointed time. He may not have worked it out in the past. It may have been 18 years. But believe you me, if I show up and be where I'm supposed to be, God can show up and turn any situation around. Amen. He can show up and turn any situation around. He's turned things around for me. God has straightened, bent things up. He have turned crooked things straight for me. I'm here to testify that. Not only did he see her, but he see you. He sees you. He sees me. Not only did he see her, but he sees the things that we're going through. He sees the pain that we're in. He sees that we can't lift ourselves up. He sees our frustration, our pain. He sees us. God is able to look beyond our faults. I'm here to tell you, he sees you. So why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely? Jesus is my portion and my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. Amen. And I know. I know. He's watching me. If he can take care of the sparrow, I know he can take care of me. So I like verse 12. I like verse 12. So Jesus does things in threes. It's the trinity of intercession. Okay. So, so if you will, the Trinity of Intercession. He sees her first, and then he speaks to her. Has anybody 
had God speak to them in the midnight hour. In the midnight hour, when you're about to give up, you're getting ready to throw in the towel, you're ready to take that handful of pills. Has anybody had God, Jesus, has anybody had God to speak to them in the midnight hour? Have you ever heard Jesus speak to you when you're about to lose it? Have you ever heard Jesus say, Trees, I've heard him. I've heard him talk to me. Have you ever heard Jesus? Have you ever heard the voice of God speak to you in that midnight hour? I've had him talk to me. In the late hours, when I didn't want to live anymore, when I had no one, I heard his voice. I heard his voice in the midnight hour. I heard the voice of the Lord in the midnight hour in the midst of all my turmoil, when I thought I had nothing left. I have been so depressed in the late hours. I have been so down and bent over in the late hours. felt like David when he said when David said if I had wings like a dove I will fly away and be at rest I heard the voice of God God has a way of coming at that appointed time he has a way of seeing how bent out of shape we are. He can see that we're bent out of shape. He can see that we can no longer lift our head. We can't lift our body. We can't lift up out of this circumstance that we're in. But Jesus, It's always there, right on time. God will come and speak to us at the most critical moment in the most critical circumstances. When we should be falling apart or when we think we are falling apart, God will step in, show up, and show out, guys. I've been in my sick bed. I have been in my, I would say, death bed. I have been in my sick bed, guys. Didn't think I was gonna make it. And I heard Jesus say I was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity. Jesus, I thank God for his voice. I thank you, Jesus, for the voice. Amen. That same voice that broke through the silence of the not yet universe and said, let there be. That voice. Same voice that said, peace be still. I thank God. I am so thankful, so grateful for the voice. I'm so Ooh. grateful that I heard the voice say, come to me, come to me and rest. I thank God I heard the voice say, come to me and rest. 
Thank God for his voice. I thank God. I thank God for always being on time. When I heard the voice, I came to Jesus as I am. I didn't try to fix up. I was too bent. I couldn't fix up. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't straighten up. I couldn't lift my head. So I came to Jesus as I was. As I am. I was wounded, weary, and sad. He said, come and I will give you rest. Jesus, I found in him a resting place. Amen. And he has made me glad. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay, so he saw her, he spoke to her, and he said those famous words, woman, thou art loose. Those are words of liberation, freedom, victory, and they are. They are. We all love those words. Woman, thou art loose. But if we stop right there, if I stop right there at woman, thou art loose, I would be insufficient. And we do shout over words of victory. Amen. Yes. Those are shouting words. They are shouting words, guys. Amen. It was not the words, thou art loose. It was not the words, woman, thou art loose, that brought her deliverance. It was not those words that brought her deliverance. She didn't get healed when she saw him. She didn't get him healed when he spoke to her. She hadn't got healed yet. She didn't get healed until he laid hands on her. I'm here to tell you guys, I am so glad that God put his hands on me. I am so glad that God touched me. When God lay his hands on you, everything crooked is made straight. When God put his hands on you, you can't do nothing but come up. You can't do nothing but rise up. You can't do nothing but see. You can't do nothing but see where you're going. When God laid his hands on her, she was delivered. When God laid his hands on you immediately, circumstances will change. The first experience, the first moment, immediately. God sent me here to tell you that you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait to June. You don't have to wait to July, August, immediately. He can turn your situation around. Immediately, he can turn any situation around. Immediately, he can make all crooked areas of your life, all bent areas of your life straight. God sent me here to tell you that he is about to manifest something in your life that's so super natural that before your eyes Immediately, circumstances is about to change. And if you have faith in the things that God can do for you, before you rise in the morning, the things that you've been grieving over can change. The job that you're looking for can change. The things in your life that are bent over, the things that are wearing you down, that you cannot see your way out, can change immediately. Also want to put in the chat, immediate blessing. Immediate blessing. Immediate blessing. Immediate blessing. Amen. This is what we're here for. God said immediate blessings on you. God said immediate blessings 
for his people. I said immediate blessings for his people. Immediate blessings, guys. This word is for me. This word is for me. Also, he said he can turn things around immediately. When he lays his hand on you at that appointed time, you will be delivered. From all, from all cricket situations. I ain't waiting for December. I ain't studying for next January. I need thee, oh Lord, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Guys, I want you to speak immediate blessing into your lives. When you answer the phone, instead of saying hello, say immediate. When you go to work, go to work with an immediate attitude, guys. Because God, once he placed his hands on you, once you're in the spot that you're supposed to be in, And he touch you. All circumstances will immediately go from cricket to straight. So guys, when life have us been out of shape, we need to go to the right place, see the right person, and most of all, get the right touch. Remember this, guys. Once God heal your situation, once God has turned your crooked places straight, he wants you to praise him. He wants you to praise him. Praise him while you're waiting. Praise him while you're going through. Praise him while you're bent over. Praise him while you can't lift your head. Praise God. When the woman was healed, he laid his hands on her and she was straightened up. She was able to rise up. She straightened up and immediately she was healed and she gave praises unto God. So this is what God has for us today. This is why God has us here. Amen. Amen. So guys, just remember, immediately, God can change any critical situation, anything cricket, and make it straight. Remember, to praise God in all situations. Remember, 18 years, and it still wasn't too late. So don't give up, guys, because God loves you. And God told me to tell you that your appointed time is now. Amen. Amen. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So I am going to talk about Esther today.